Hi everybody, I'm Girl Writes What, and this is the fourth installment of my series on legal paternal surrender. The concept that a man should be allowed the right to consent or not to the burdens and obligations of parenthood. Today I'm going to tackle the second most pervasive one uh, that seems to be, oddly enough, more commonly used by men than by women, and which goes something like this. But it's hard! Really? Mention that women have unilateral power of decision over abortion and they therefore can unilaterally opt out of motherhood before birth? You'll hear something like, as if having a, an abortion is a walk in the park. Uh, well, no duh, but here's the thing, it's still a choice. Mention that women as a group are as capable of earning an income sufficient to raise a child without support as anyone else, and you'd think, Denying child support to a typical single mother was the equivalent of dooming her to a life in a cardboard box, turning tricks in return for half-eaten sandwiches. People are constantly telling me that being a single mother is a struggle. Well, you know, this is probably going to shock all of you, but I know that. I did that for three years with three kids. It is difficult, but the fact that it's difficult is completely immaterial to this debate. Uh, because it's also a choice that a woman doesn't have to make. I've had people claim that abortions aren't easy to obtain or free. Sometimes you have to make two separate trips to the doctor, necessitating two separate days off work, lost income, inconvenience, all of that. Really? Uh, do these people have brains? Uh, do they really think prenatal care, weeks or months off work, and a mouth to feed for the next 18 years is somehow going to be less inconvenient or costly than an abortion? Uh, I even had one commenter here mention that, from what he'd heard, having an IUD implanted was quite painful. <laughs> not compared to childbirth, it's not. I really have to wonder where women have left their big girl panties. Sisters are doing it for themselves, but only if someone else puts a huge chunk of the bill. Advocates are fighting tooth and nail to defend a woman's right to abortion, and all I seem to hear about in the context of this debate is how it's not really a choice, because it's difficult, or it isn't free, or it takes longer than a haircut. Uh, you go, girl, until things get tough, and then the system has to force somebody else to pay for your decisions. Who are the babies, and who are the women here? The foundation all these arguments seem to rest on is that these choices are somehow forced on women because men make women pregnant. She really had nothing to do with it. I don't even know if she was in the same room when they had sex. His single decision, ejaculation, is so powerful that it weighs just as much on the scales of reproductive agency as all the combined clout of the unilateral power she has from before conception onward. Pregnancy was something he did to her. And the baby? Well, the baby just happened. He made his choice when they had sex is somehow seen as exactly the same as she made the same choice when they had sex, then chose not to take the morning after pill, then chose not to have an abortion, then chose not to abandon or adopt out the child. And honestly, it just, the whole, the whole argument, but it's hard. Uh, it stinks, it stinks uh, of, of the fact that you can't actually expect women to make hard decisions because they're hard. Mitigating your risk of pregnancy is hard, and deciding to end a pregnancy is hard, and access to abortion might require two separate trips to a doctor, and that's hard, and having a child is hard, and raising it alone is hard, and because it's all so hard, women can't be expected to do it without help. If they don't have all the help they can get with respect to every single option they have, then somehow none of these choices actually exist, and she'll be forced to do something she doesn't want to do. These choices are so hard, they're not really choices at all. They're actually burdens, and refusing to make these burdens easy or withdrawing the enforcement of child support would force women to have abortions or force women to raise their children in squalor or abandon them. When two unmarried people generate a pregnancy, the woman has virtually all the power and the man has virtually none. He has no say as to what his life is going to look like, and she has total control over what three lives are going to look like. Yet I constantly see this immense power women have framed as an oppression, 
Her choices are so very difficult that every option must be padded with pastel-colored chenille teddy bears, all of them smiling, if she's to be able to make them without being destroyed by the effort. Hell, if all that choice is actually, actually an oppression, maybe women shouldn't have it to be oppressed by. Honestly, if I got pregnant by accident and I wanted to keep the baby and the man refused to contribute financially, I'd flip him the bird, have the kid, go on with my life, and leave him to his. How is getting to do whatever the hell I want a hardship just because I can't chain an unwilling human being to me before jumping out of the airplane? And no one ever seems to really give a moment's thought or consideration to the fact that the only person who's actually forced to do anything in this situation is the man. If she aborts, he's forced to live with it. If she abandons or adopts out or never tells him that the ex child exists, he's forced to live with that. If she keeps the baby and seeks child support, he's forced to pay it. Really and for true forced. Not kinda sorta forced, but go to jail if you don't forced. Do any of my esteemed opponents in this debate ever stop to wonder uh, if a given man might find that hard? Oh wait, who cares? He brought it on himself when he ejaculated. He made her have that baby and she didn't have a choice because her choices were hard. And meanwhile, in one U.S. state, a bill is under review that would make it a criminal offense for a man to break up with or stop supporting a pregnant partner if it's determined that he's doing it because he wants her to have an abortion. Because she'd be totally helpless against any suggestion that her guy never wanted to do the kids, dog, white picket fence thing and that he actually has a life too. And if he breaks up with her, she'd be forced to abort her child. Are you kidding me? Because she really needs those smiling pastel-colored teddy bears to be padding all her possible choices. Or they're not really choices at all? Uh, really? Which makes me wonder just how long we have to wait for an infanticide version of this nonsense bill where a man won't be allowed to file for divorce until the kid's strong enough to push the pillow off his face. Because who knows? what women would be forced to do if men were allowed to do that. It's ridiculous and insulting. I, I can't even understand how women anywhere in this day and age, in this day and age of uh, female independence, self-sufficiency, empowerment, can put up with this bullshit, especially from a bunch of white knights who think that Somehow women are just wilting flowers that, oh my god, if it rains too hard on them, they'll be crushed. It's, it, it just, it, it beggars belief that, that women, on the whole, don't stand up and say, what the fuck are you implying here? That, are, are you implying that I'm, I'm just some weak, frail, being that needs to be protected from my own decisions, from my own life, from my own circumstances. I I just don't get it. I just don't. And uh, and I, I just think it's just so, so very disempowering to women and it just gives women no credit at all. Uh, it's a shit attitude, um, especially in a day and age when women are, <laughs> women are arguably doing better than men in a myriad of ways. So, I just have no patience for it at all. None. Anyhow, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I can't even call it an argument. Um, that objection to legal paternal surrender. And uh, I noticed there are some things going down in the feminist community and the MRA community uh, having to do with someone named uh, Agent Orange and uh, a place called Rad Femme Hub. And uh, I was going to do a post about that in uh, not too long, but I just have to take some time and collect my thoughts on that one. And uh, hopefully that'll be coming at you within the next couple of weeks, maybe in time for Christmas. So uh, I guess that's all for today. And... Uh, I got things to do in my messy kitchen, so I will see you all next time. For now, ciao.